And so, um, for the University of Sunderland, I'm a postgraduate academic assistant in tourism, and part of that role as, as an employee is to teach on their undergraduate and master's program in tourism, hospitality, and events. And the other part of it is that I have to complete um, a PhD doctorate um, as, as, part of, as a sort of part-time scenario. And perhaps you're wondering why I'm telling you all this is because I belong to the Faculty of Business and Law, and um, upon that sort of information, you guys might be thinking, well, what the hell are you doing here then? <laughs> um, because it's, this is an arts, design, and media event um, sort of thing. Um, and for a number of years, I considered myself to be a visual artist. I've got four MAs in various arts-related subjects, including curating, fine art, and all, and, and all the rest of it. Um, and when I took up this opportunity um, in the tourism department, it was partly economic actually. Um, it was the only department that would give me a job that would actually pay me to do my work. Um, but it was an interesting um, transition that I went through because obviously as a practitioner, someone who you know, uh, was very emotional, my work was about the, the self, being visceral, approaches to making things that said sort of, you know, sort of produce narratives about the world. Um, suddenly I was in a situation where um, my um, self-indulgent um, subjectivity, if you like, um, was not, not that it was questioned, but I, as a social scientist, had to kind of learn the idea of objectivity and what that could mean, and maybe be flexible about my own subjectivities, um, which has been an interesting process, and it's something that I'll talk about in a minute in terms of uh, the methodolo methodological sort of approaches I've had to take. So my actual um, research is VW campervan subcultures, tourism mobility, and experiences. I don't know if there are any VW campervans in owners in the audience at all. Anyone want to own up to their sins? Oh, great. We, perhaps we can have a conversation later. This is, um, well, it was my van. I've since sold it because I realized I could make five grand on the deal. Um, but I used it for my research purposes and I've done my field work now. Um, these have a very interesting history. I'm not here to kind of relay the history, but they started off as a very cheap family family vehicle in the 50s, in the 60s they became part of the hippie um, freedom movement, so we're associated with that, then it was surf culture, and I guess part of my research is to try and comprehend the people that use these machines, where they go, where they move to, in terms of tourism, um, but I'm very much interested in the body and the machine also. Now before I started, the, and what I'm really interested in is how we come to the conclusion of ideas, how do we get ideas for research projects? Um, and as an artist, um, I kind of, I guess, drew upon myself because I bought this van long before I thought about the project. Um, and I'd like to read you a piece from um, a book chapter that I uh, am writing at the moment um, called um, Moral Encounters. And here's a little sort of summary of the position, the predicament, if you like, of, of the tourist, or at least this tourist, and many tourists who tour about in the vehicles, okay? And I've written that before I ever imagined studying the phenomena of VW campervan subcultures, I found myself on the internet shopping forum eBay buying what I called my midlife crisis van. This was a term I used to explain the motivation which led me towards the purchase of um, a material object, which up until the point of pressing the bid button um, on the internet was never found um, as I never alluded to it in either my lifestyle or my consciousness, which I found very interesting. Interest. It's not something I was never brought up with camping. I hate camping, frankly. I hate glamping, actually. Uh, give me a five-star hotel any day. Um, but perhaps the idea of buying a camper van evoked a sense of possibility, of freedom, past freedoms, perhaps. Perhaps it was a nostalgic move. Um, and I thought about all of this in the fleeting moment before winning the bid and doing the bank transfer. Um, so the idea of an old van, an old Volkswagen van, would that really be able to enable me to return to a place where motility and freedom could be achievable again, momentarily articulated through these imagined mobilities. Um, but of course, um, as many people, I don't know whether you've ever booked a holiday and thought, what am I doing here? This was not what I was showing on the internet. Um, the same possibly happened here to me. For whatever positive thoughts I'd had when the vehicle was delivered to my door, the holiday ideal was in light contrast to the dark reality which followed. <laughs> and so 
I realized that my rusty, it was in fact a rusty old van that was difficult to drive and impossible to maintain on my low income. And in fact, what it was actually was a two-star youth hostel on wheels, <laughs> in actual fact, much to my despair. And so what was I to do with this mobile home? And this is this idea of trying to understand the predicament of the tourist, the predicament of someone who wants to be mobile. Um, and as de Botton said, fleeing from the horror of home was frantically replaced by there's no place like home in actual fact. Um, if you've ever seen The Wizard of Oz, Dorothy Red Shoes. Um, <laughs> and indeed, from the position where I, I liked the idea of owning it, but I thought it was better that it was secured, you know, safely on the drive, which is where it stayed for most of the time until I got a job actually using it as a research vehicle. And I joined this VW Campervan Club, hoping for support to perhaps get those people to understand why I'd surreptitiously, surreptitiously join their club. Okay? And a lot of my research really is trying to comprehend that idea, the phenomenon of movement, of people gathering, coming together, and what that could mean in terms of human geographies. Um, and so, in terms of my research, I have done, this is year two, but in a part-time capacity. Here I am at a particular, I, I've been to about five festivals in total, uh, but visited them a couple of times just to kind of double check the research. Here is North Allerton. My van is parked down there. I did have it at the time. And I'm very interested in these subcultures, okay? This is only one representation of a type of gathering, other people gather in different ways who um, own these vans, but these are VW camper van um, um, festivals. And these people are not nomadic. I affectionately call them weekend warriors um, who dip into this idea of freedom and what freedom can mean, perhaps creating a sort of mobile village, a utopia, if you like, and I'm very interested in how to kind of deal with that. Uh, I lived on, on those, in those encampments for just three days, few, fortunately, only kidding. Um, and in that time, I spent time eating, chatting with strangers, making connections. I did interviews, I did recordings, I made films, and all sorts of stuff to gather the data, to gather the idea of what are people experiencing? What is it like to be there, as Laurier says? Be there to feel there. What is the experience? And all I'm actually doing is kind of tracking that experience, and then I guess the PhD will kind of, it, at some point I'll go through some analysis where we'll try and come together, bring that sort of stuff together. Also in the back of the room, I have a film of, well basically, I have a film which is basically myself making films on my mobile phone, no, no, no health and safety requirements there whatsoever, only kidding, um, but it's just data, it's actually, not, it's a visual representation of data which has to go through some analysis. So normally in the past as a visual artist I'm making an artwork, I don't really see it as that, I just see it as something that I can look at later. Now in terms of my um, literature review, Okay, um, I'm looking at the whole kind of wider community of um, theorists such as Uri, Scheller and Hannum who look at um, the new mobilities paradigm, tourism mobilities, how do people move? And I guess there's been a paradigm shift in social scientists where instead of thinking about the human being as geographically placed, spatially fixed, we're talking about different kinds of ways of thinking about movement, whether it be virtual, communicative, um, in terms of the actual corporal body moving through time and space. So I'm looking at thinking about all those issues when trying to analyze these particular um, subcultures, if you like. And also the slow travel movement comes into this particular equation because you don't buy one of these vans if you're a boy or girl racer. These vans travel at 40 miles an hour. And people, whether unwittingly buy them that way or they discover them to be that way, that is the deal. So it's about slow travel. Um, <coughs> In terms of my literature review, I have three strands. One is to think about the human and the machine, okay? Very interested in the body and the machine hybrid. I'm very interested in Donna Haraway. Um, interested also in Merleau-Ponty, the idea of perception. How we perceive a relationship between the material object and the human. What that means, whether we're consciously doing it or subconsciously doing it, what is that connection? So it's this idea of thinking about the transgressed body. What does that mean? How does that create movement and in what way? Okay? And from there, I guess, 
What is really phenomenological is the, um, I mean, people fall in love with lots of material objects, right? But people are very emotionally attached to these vans in a way that they, they call them a family member. Um, they won't sell them. Sometimes they'd rather, you know, um, not have their combi boilers fixed rather than and, and be in the cold but fix their van. There's a very interesting human connection to that material object which can perhaps be unpacked through some of these theories. And then there's the idea of the us. So you've got your van. Why not drive? drive into the wilderness and not meet up with anyone. You've got your van, right? You've got a great relationship there, whether it's a love-hate one. Um, and very interesting, the idea of imagined communities. Some, something has got these people to this place, and I'm very interested in that. And people interpret them in different ways. I don't know whether you notice, just under my arm there, some people actually redevelop their own su suburban enclave, if you like. They build things, right? they build fortresses. They, they also gather in communities. Um, you have the Durham club, you have the Newcastle club, and they often don't talk to each other. So whilst people come together, it's a bit like a micro-society, really. It's like how the world really works. This is not utopian. It's, it's not dystopian, but I would argue that it is just another way that you get social formations manifesting in certain ways. Okay? And of course, there's an interesting class division as well. I find when I talk to middle class people, they, they tend not to go to these festivals. You get the odd one, okay? Um, but generally, um, middle class people with these vans, they're much more interested in the aesthetics as opposed to the mechanics. And they often go into the wilderness to, to have their own autonomous and free holiday. Here, people like the idea of getting together, talking about the blood and guts of the van, talking about the mechanics of it, that sort of stuff. Getting together for different types of reasons. I'm very interested in that. And then finally, just to finish off, so the idea of getting from A to B, I'm absolutely fascinated by. I'll not try and explain this next diagram. It's a bit rough. But in terms of, um, Chris mentioned Latour, uh, Bruno Latour in Reassembling the Social. I'm very interested in the idea of actor network theory, about how to understand, you know, how things get from A to B. I know, um, <coughs> Basically, there are arguments that perhaps the A to B is actually a liminal space, a space that has no meaning. Uh, Mark Auger talks about A to B, the space in between, as a non-space, a space where there's no community, no life. One of my contestations is that people are perhaps dwelling in motion. You're taking your house on the road. What does that mean? You know, if you're taking your house on the road, you're perhaps taking your identity on the road. And one of my arguments is that perhaps it's a fixity in motion, in actual fact. Perhaps you're not moving at all because, in a sense, the things, that, the things that you're taking with you are things that actually are normally fixed anyway. So that's one of my kind of ideas. But I guess the idea is that within the next two years, I'll put this through a kind of rigorous analysis in which network theory generally will be used to understand how things basically move from A to B. Thank you very much.